Hello, everyone. It is 6.01 p.m. on Monday, February 28th. This is the Monday regular board meeting for the Monroe School District. Present are all five directors, Director Campbell, Director Whitfield, Director Barnes, Director Johnson, myself, and executive staff members, as well as members of our staff and members of the community. I want to welcome everyone to tonight's meeting. Members of the public can log into the board meeting using the Zoom link on the board docs website. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, on to agenda item 1.04, review of the agenda. Below are, um, or actually, I will go ahead and list some of the changes, some of the revisions to the agenda. 5.02, interim superintendent contract has been removed. 6.01, accounts payable was updated. 9.02, executive session was added. Um, is there a motion to approve the agenda? as revised. We move to approve the revised school board agenda dated February 28, 2022. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, there is a motion. There is a motion to approve the agenda as modified on February 28, 2022. There is a second discussion. All in favor, raise your hand. All opposed, don't raise your hand. Just kidding. It passes 5-0. Moving on to agenda item 2.01, student directors. So did we have him hop on? Nope, we've got you, Nathan. Let's go ahead, Nathan. Um, anything you'd like to present? Yes, as you can see, I'm at the high school today because track just got over and it's pretty wet. It was fun. Uh, so sports just started and I'm really pumped about it. Uh, yeah, we've got a lot of good ones this trimester. <laughs> so, um, and gymnastics just ended and they did really well. Um, and also middle school, middle, school sport, sport, middle school sports also started recently and those are going great. So lots of stuff in athletics going on right now. And dance is going to districts this Saturday, which is exciting. I think they're, they're the last high school sport from the second trimester still going. And they're doing great. We've got, um, oh yeah, robotics. Uh, robotics is doing really well right now. They've got a competition also this Saturday. And I don't know, my brother's back there, but he's doing a lot for that. And yeah, the, ro the robot's looking really good. Um, moving on, we've got ACT at the high school, uh, which is, for those of you who don't know, ACT is the time period during the day for about half an hour where students can work on what they need to and get stuff done, basically. Um, but there's been some conflict over that uh, throughout the school year with some of the students wanting more freedom and I recently, due to some incidents during act time, uh, it's kind of been, the freedom's been cut back a little. We can't go wherever we want unless we have a note. And a lot of students want open campus and want to leave places and go to lunch and stuff, but we can't do that right now. So I'd say it's probably one of the most unpopular things that's happened this school year <laughs> with the students, at least at, high, at the high school, to have that restricted. But we'll work on it, try to get more freedom while still being safe. And also, uh, Andrew and I had a meeting with uh, Mrs. Whitworth on Friday and talked about a communication plan and just all sorts of stuff about how we can be better student directors. And that's all I've got. Awesome, thank you, Nathan. Uh, directors, any questions? I just appreciate uh, Nathan that you and Andrew are working together on that. That's uh, that's pretty awesome, and I think that maybe even including uh, ASB president as well, and just kind of 
getting more of those voices that you guys can can work together and i appreciate you guys taking initiative to do that that's really important i love that you guys were working with other student directors uh that were at the you know the student version of wazda across that but i think also um expanding your reach to talk reach across to to, to work with other students um within the high school and you know leaders and learning and you know across the whole district because you guys are representing everybody not just you know high school and and sky valley and so i appreciate you guys working on that so i look forward to seeing how that works out for you yep that was one of the things we were working on just we're thinking about setting up it was mrs whitworth that whitworth's idea to set up a student advisory council and i think it's a really good idea where a whole bunch of leaders of students throughout the district can get together and figure stuff out it helps your job too as well it's not just yeah, go yeah. digging for stuff but you have people bringing you information as you report out so it's good any other questions for nathan right. nathan is it true i heard that you've uh connected with some other wasda reps or other student leaders uh outside of monroe is that yes true? it is true yeah we've oh. been uh, just working on uh, kind of the definitions of student directors and also how we can do better. And it's really the first year they've had anything like this. So we're kind of getting the feet under us and learning a lot. It's pretty interesting. It seems like sometimes at such a big level, there's less you can do to actually help people. But at the same time, we can do some good and we're an important voice. So it's more student voice in the local government and in the state government, which is good. That's really awesome. I'm excited to see uh, you in action in that position. I think that we, we got to meet some really cool student leaders last year at the conference and I'm, I can definitely see you on that stage at some point. So it makes me really excited for you. And thank, thank, you. You, so, thank you so much for your report. Love hearing about all of the extracurricular activities and athletics. So thank you for that. Yep. Okay, moving on to agenda item 2.02, .02, and we have a legislative report. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but Andrew just got on. Oh, okay, awesome. Thank you. Hey, Andrew. Uh, hello, yeah, sorry about that. Um, yeah, so um, at Sky Valley, it's been a pretty quiet, pretty routine. Um, I've been asking students, um, just going around and asking some of the students what um, like what challenges they uh, struggle with every day, um, if any. And um, so far, um, I believe four of them said, um, four or five of them said mass, one of them said homework, and then one of them said both. So um, yeah, and um, yeah, it's been pretty quiet at Sky Valley, not really much going on, but just wanted to get a little bit of a, just figure out what um, students are struggling with and um, hopefully there's something we can do to help. Thank you. Any questions for Andrew? All right. Andrew, awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing that information and for going out and speaking with other students. Oh, Nathan has a question. Oh, well, just saying, please excuse me early today. I need to get home and do homework and all that, but it's good to be on. Thank you, Nathan. Okay. Uh, President Bumpus, I have one quick question for Andrew, if I may. Go ahead, Director Johnson. So I'm, I'm, um, I saw one little blurb about um, students getting information about graduation at Sky Valley Education. So I, I know that we um, are maybe hearing some about the Monroe High School graduation, but I'm curious if, if you could provide some more information about graduation through Sky Valley, because I know the blurb that I saw uh, said that it was important for both juniors and seniors to that info. Um, okay, I'll try to uh, try to answer your question as uh, best as I can. Um, I don't know a whole lot about it, but I do know that um, 
I guess our youth are wanting specifically to know what the kind of pathway is to graduate from Sky Valley. Or just what is, what are, I guess, what are the, you know, what do you need to do to prepare? What would juniors and seniors be needing, needing to do to prepare? Is there like an application process you need to go through or are there tests that need to be completed uh, in order to do so? And sorry to put you on the spot. I'm happy to, happy to defer a response <laughs> to next meeting. <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, thank you. Um, uh, I'll, yeah, I'll try to answer that. Um, I believe it's pretty much the same for, um, as the same as other um, uh, schools since it's a public school. It's uh, funded by the government under OSPI. And, um, but I believe you do have to, you have to meet with a counselor, have to lay out kind of a, you know, your plan for graduation. Um, I'm not entirely sure all the tests that need to be taken, but I believe it's the standard ones that you would need to take um, to graduate high school. I believe you need the same amount of credits as, um, for example, Monroe High School. Um, and so I think it's, for the most part, the same. You can, I think there's a little more flexibility, perhaps, with um, like going to Snow Owl Tech, for example, or going to um, Running Start. Uh, I think they do maybe do that a little bit more than at other um, high schools, perhaps. But I think for the most part, the essence of the process is the same. I hope, I hope that was, I hope that uh, satisfies your question. Yeah, it does. Thank you so much, Andrew. I appreciate it. Right. Thank you, Andrew. Okay, we'll go ahead and move on to legislative report 2.02 .02 and We'll go ahead and hand it over to Director Whitfield to present that report. Good evening, everybody. Well, it's getting interesting in the legislature. Um, I've asked uh, Director Johnson to give some remarks after I'm done because there's a lot to follow and a lot of changes. Um, kind of give you a recap of how things work. You know, how does House and Senate bills or introduced and they have to reconcile the bills before they can become law and they have to have the exact same language and all the bills have financial implications. So as they're reconciling, they introduce amendments and that is uh, in response to the financial implications. So they started at 80 amendments and now they're down to 54. And they have to, right now they're in the, the budgeting process. It's really the, the operating budget that we're taking a look at right now, but there's also capital budgets. Um, and if there's a disagreement, then it goes to a reconciliation, a conference committee. Um, I was gonna read about three paragraphs about what goes on and you, if you can test it and then you could recontest it. And then it goes to the ways and means, and it's really pretty interesting, but it's, it'd be a long thing to go through. Uh, but the board asked last meeting to focus on bills that might have uh, financial implications for us. So there was, the main bill is uh, enrollment step stabilization, and then there's a Senate bill and a House bill. So I'm just gonna read these uh, brief description of each. So in the Senate bill, um, 346 million, this budget provides funding for OSPI to provide allocation to stabilize school districts that experienced enrollment declines as a result of COVID-19 that led to a loss of revenue in the 2021, 2022 school year when compared to the 2019, 2020 revenue. Employment st stabilization in the Senate is calculated as required on this bill and would provide 50% of the funding loss as calculated by OSPI. And there's also a House bill <clears throat> provides employment stabilization as described. Uh, OSPI would provide funding for school districts with actual enrollment of from 20 2021 to 2022, lower than the budgeted amount for 2021-2022, capped at a proportional stabilization amount. So it's a little 
a little tricky with uh, looking at the, the actual calculation. But I asked, uh, I asked Brenda to take a look at this and how this would affect, uh, how this would affect our budget. And so the, she said that the house bill, we would get, the district would get a, approximately six, 635,000, but the Senate bill, we would get, get about $4 million and change. And there has been, uh, they just gave some updates on the 22nd, but this is where these amendments come back and forth, um, where they're refining. And the other one I was looking at was staffing allocations. Um, both budget provide <clears throat> for enhanced staffing allocations for physical, social, emotional support staff. And they provide allocations for funding for the budget. Well, Brenda had said that uh, increased funding for staff within this category, there is increased staff funding for staff. However, no requirement yet to increase st staffing may change. Currently, it provides more state dollars to free up levy dollars so the districts can have more local control and make decisions based on community and district priorities. So the employment stabilization is the big one, but it's if you hear anything in the news about uh, the battle uh, regarding the budget, that's a function of how these bills are being progressed. And I was reading through some of the amendments and just looking to see if there was anything else that might come up. There's like $37 million for school seismic safety. And I'm thinking that of all the schools in, in Washington, they would use that up quickly. There's additional funding for distressed schools, which is good, uh, but that specifically addresses school districts. Uh, there's early learning facilities, 47 million. That's for the purchase, construction, and modernization of early learning. And there's um, phased in social emotional learning and health staffing for nurses, social workers, and counselors. So I don't know how that would work into you know, our needs, but it, it could be beneficial if that, if that goes through. Any questions on that? Or you can direct all your questions to Director Johnson. <laughs> I have a question, and Sarah might be able to follow up or you, Chuck. Uh, my ears perked up when I heard the early learning facilities funding in one of the projects that we've kind of had, had to put on the back burner, but we're looking for, and I know some of you guys toured was Wagner, Wagner Center and mm -hmm. early, early learning for that. And would that be something that would qualify? Would we apply for a grant? But then the question is, with her levy issue, would we even be able to fund staffing it? And so I just, yeah. my mind kind of goes there, but it, it could be something that could help. And we're not using capital projects dollars to be able to do that, which I know Victor would be very happy about. So well, um, but would that would that be something we could do, a possibility? Um, I'll just tell you my gut reaction is that uh, when I think of the early learning, I'm thinking it more in, in classrooms or um, situations for each school. Um, and it would be more of a broad brush. Um, and as I learned visiting uh, Frank Wagner, the early learning, preparing students to get, to be prepared to enter school in the kindergarten. Um, so I, you know, they talked about it in a broad brush, but not anything, not anything specific. And plus it's, you know, $47 million and, you know, that's chump change around uh, state budgets. So I will keep an eye out for that and see if that becomes available. Um, anything else? I know that doesn't answer your question, Director Campbell, but I can't give you a specific. Director Johnson, do you have any input on things? I do, um, and I and I want to start by just thanking um, Director Whitfield for um, reaching out. We, it's I think the legislative stuff is something both of us are learning about and feel passionate about, and so I am just really grateful for the opportunity we had to to talk about some of it and and learn about it together. So I wanted to start with that, and then I'll just kind of do a quick um, 
update on bills that have had recent action. And some of them are ones that Director Whitfield has already discussed. So ones that have currently passed, um, we've got eight, excuse me, passed the House and the Senate and are on their way to the governor's desk. So um, 1878 is school participation in free lunches. It's awesome, that's expanding. Um, 1430 is leasing lands. That one I am not as familiar with, um, but is maybe something that we get to talk about in the future. And the last one that has already moved all the way through both um, chambers is 5252, which is consultation with local tribes. Um, so all excellent, um, I think, good progressive uh, moving us forward in the right direction. Um, today, this morning, Senate Bill 5933, which is that seismic safety grant passed through House Committee on Capital Budgets. That next will go, I think, to a floor vote. Uh, other ones on the floor are 1834, which categorizes uh, ex mental health absences as excused absences, 5497, which extends, and Nathan, you may be interested in this one, um, extends voting authority to student members of the State Board of Education. So when you're talking about what, mm -hmm. what role do student members have, that is something that um, is going to a vote on the floor. Yes, I know the bill. Have update update soon, and then the the last one on its way to the floor is fifty eight fifty five, which is campaign funds to reimburse childcare and other caregiving services while campaigning. Which I think at least a few of us could maybe uh, speak to <laughs> in the last year as being important. Um, the Ways and Means Committee met this morning at ten o'clock, and I looked right before the meeting, and I didn't see any updates from them. Three that they were looking at though were that. Um, some the uh, enrollment stability 1590, the 1664 prototypical formula for physical, social, and emotional support, and 1723 for telecommunications and digital equity. So the legislative session ends on March 10th. And so at that point, we should have some understanding about what we've got to work with. And then the last thing that I wanted to bring up is a piece from um, legislation that has already passed. So this was from the last uh, legislative session. It was signed into law by Governor Inslee on May 3rd of 2021. And that will require all Washington schools to provide free menstrual hygiene products uh, for um, all female and gender neutral bathrooms. And for those schools that don't have gender neutral bathrooms, products must be in at least one male bathroom in the school. Um, I look forward to seeing how Monroe puts this into place. It's required by the 2022-23 school year start. And I think it's a good example of how long it takes for legislation to go through, um, to actually be implemented, and to positively impact our, our educational community and our students. So thank you. And thanks again, Director Whitfield. That was fun this week. <laughs> Victor? Well, I can I can help you, Sarah, with that. We've already started to research it, and we have a lot of the uh, units already ready to be ordered for all the restrooms. So, awesome! Thank you so much, Victor. Um, any other questions, directors? Chuck and Sarah, I, I sorry, Director Johnson, Director Whitfield, I'd love a list of those, maybe especially uh, that directly financially impact our school district or have the potential to, especially as we get ready to uh, put forth the communication from the board. So I would love a list of, of that to include in the communication, um, especially as we move forward so that they kind of stay at the top of, of the list and we can come back to them and our community understands if maybe they're not able to tune in tonight. So thank you so much for all of that work um, and all of that reading and, uh, you know, doing it from your hearts. I appreciate you both for that. Okay, and with that said, if there are no other questions, we'll go on to agenda item 3.01. And it is audience comments. Let me go ahead and read my little blurb here.
Okay, we welcome comments about school board and district decisions, processes, and concerns. I will take a few minutes to remind everyone how this works. Each speaker has three minutes. However, if several are here on the same topic, a representative may be selected for the group and speak for 10 minutes. In doing so, the individuals in that group yield, yield their time to the representative. It is important to note that a separate process exists for concerns about staff. Audience comments during the school board meeting is not the forum for staff complaints. If you are here for that reason, please contact any staff member and they will help you learn more about the staff complaint process. Be aware that if at any time during a speaker's comments, the words begin to approach a personnel concern, I will remind the speaker once and keep the com to keep the comments centered on district or school board decisions, processes, and concerns. If that speaker continues with staff related comments, I will give 30 seconds for the presenter to immediately sum up their thoughts and return to the audience. Again, please contact any staff member to help with how to go forward with a complaint about personnel. Okay, and Keith, are you ready? We have- one, Yeah, one moment. For some reason, the timer is not coming up tonight like it normally does. Um, I, can, I can time it on my Okay, end. yeah, okay. I think we're going to need to do that. I'm sorry, President Malpas. For some reason, it's just not coming up normally. It, it just pops right in. So, um, okay. okay. So I will go ahead and um, it looks like, uh, oh, you know what? Just as I said that, up comes the timer. <laughs> Hang right. on just a second here. I was really looking forward to that, Keith. I know you were. I, did, I don't mean to steal your thunder. <laughs> okay. We have two public comments tonight. Um, and we'll go ahead and start with our first one. Okay, I will promote Melanie at this time. Hello. Melanie, can I please have you state your name and re your relationship to the school district? Of course. My name is Melanie Lockhart, and I'm a mother within the district. Thank you, Board of Directors, Acting Superintendent Kim Whitworth, and Cabinet staff for the levy conversation last week. I appreciate the thought and consideration that went into admitting that district voters have a variety of concerns that need to be addressed in more time than the April election would have allowed. That decision comes with some really tough budget choices that will be necessary later in the spring, ones that may cost us some quality staff members and impact valuable programs. Hopefully the district and community can come together to brainstorm ways to minimize those biggest impacts. I urge the district to consider hosting town hall style meetings, conducting surveys for stakeholders to voice their priorities, and putting together a budget steering committee to help make recommendations to the board. Collaboration is a step forward or a step toward rebuilding that because the more the community is involved in the process, the less they will question the process. To the directors, we know three of you were part of the unanimous vote to put the levy on the ballot for February. And I know all five of you on the board today expressed heartache during the levy discussion last week. Your vulnerability did not go unnoticed. That said, this next piece is for each of you to please reflect on personally. What did each of you do to help get the levy passed beyond that initial vote? Did you reach out to your community voters? Did you engage with any opposing voices, particularly those who you know supported some of your recent campaigns? Did you publicly advocate for the passage of the levy and work to convince voters who may have been on the fence? For those of you who were on the previous board that many in this community feel perpetuated the distrust that has grown over the years, have you publicly taken personal accountability for any of that? Have you tried saying you're sorry, acknowledging where things have gone wrong, and addressing where you can do better. That's usually a good starting point for rebuilding trust. I urge each of you for the next ballot attempt to make your stance known. Don't let it be some mystery where you stand. Be bold, engage with your community, with your voters and encourage others. Let them know why you feel the way you do. The district itself is limited in what it can do in terms of presenting the levy. The use of school facilities, time and resources is to actively support or oppose a levy is not permitted by law but individual staff members, including board members, may do so in their own time. 
Quoting the Washington State Public Disclosure, Disclosure Commission's website, school directors are free to support school district ballot issues and engage in other political activities as long as such activities do not make use of district facilities, time, or resources. So if you want this for our kids, for your kids, stand up and advocate. I worry you don't want to lose favor with some of the people who actively supported some of your campaigns and who have actively stated publicly that you are in their political corner. Some of these people are also encouraging others to pull their kids from the district to worsen the budget issues. If you are in their corner for the levy issues, let the public know yourselves. State your thoughts so there will be no more mystery. If you're not, say where you stand. As a mom and a taxpayer, I certainly want to know. Furthermore, I urge you to not let any intimidation tactics sway you into staying mostly silent. Sending public records requests to your home addresses was intimidation. It's not the request itself. We're all well aware by now I am a huge proponent of public records requests. So I say request away if you're looking for information. But there is a clear process that some people actively chose to go around. And in doing so, they also felt it necessary to notify the local like-minded sheriff, which to me indicates they were fully aware it would indeed appear intimidating, because why else would you need to contact law enforcement and make note of that at all? Many of these same people have an agenda to ultimately dismantle public schools, and some of them supported the majority of you being in your positions. Ask yourselves, why you? because you are board members elected to better our public schools, not destroy them. And you've now got a failed levy under your belt. Four of you have students attending Monroe schools. So please step up, advocate, loudly support the next levy attempt if you want it to pass and be transparent with this community. If you don't be bold, it's for our kids. Thank you. Thank you, Melanie. Hey, Keith. Hello. Let's see if we can't get. <clears throat> I think this is the right Clayton. I only see one Clayton on the screen. So hopefully, this is the right one. Clayton? Yes, do you guys have me now? Yep, we can hear you. Can I please have you? Uh, well, can you give us your name and your relationship to the school district? My name's Clayton Stewart. I'm a parent of uh, numerous kids in the district. Um, this is uh, from the Washington Parents Alliance to the Monroe uh, School Board. At the start of this year, a grassroots movement of parents across the state submitted identical public disclosure requests to over 60 school districts prepared by a tribal lawyer, Lewis Ewing. You've already received these lengthy documents and should be familiar with their contents. The Washington Parents Alliance continues to grow and currently has over 10,000 participants with more districts coming on board every week. This is not a funded nonprofit organization and you will not find much information about WAPA online. This movement of parents has gathered to educate themselves on the Washington laws that create and govern our school systems. For too long, parents have been ignorant or uninvolved in matters that influence our children's experience in school, and we aim to take responsibility for that mistake. What we discovered in the last two months presenting PDRs at school board meetings across the state was astonishing. The majority of school board members are just as ignorant of the laws that govern them as we were. Perhaps we can learn together. Type RCW28A into any search engine to begin your journey. As we shared these documents to school board members, we were met with multiple reactions. Many were grateful for the efforts parents were making to help find them information from state agencies that they were also curious about. They appreciated that we were bringing attention to laws that the schools might be violating. Other board members reacted with confusion and others revealed how little they knew of the recent laws passed or amended that legally compel them to attend WSSDA training that they may or may not agree with. We knew we were not following protocol when we sent our PDRs to your homes rather than submitting them to the public information officer of each district. 
we were using the PDR process to do the job that our county sheriffs and your legal counsel should have been doing. Educating you on the laws the schools could be violating as they have forced or coerced vaccines and masks on employees and students. As described in the PDR, the Social Security Act codified as 42 USC 139 F appears to provide a federal religious exemption from all medical treatment or testing based upon religious objection. How many teachers and staff applied for religious exemptions from the experimental COVID-19 vaccine and were denied? How many invaluable teachers and administrators were forced to quit or be coerced into getting a medical product they had hesitation about? Every state in the union has a law on informed consent, which outlines that medical doctors must inform a patient of risks and benefits of any medical product or device and receive a consent to administer the drug or device without coercion. Is it possible that threatening one's job if they don't take a vaccine could be considered coercion? Medical doctors did not mandate your employees get vaccinated. The district did. Is the district comprised of medical doctors who have the ability to carry out informed consent? How about Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act of 1973 and the Americans with Disabilities Act Amendments of 2008, which clearly outlines that a medical diagnosis from a doctor is not required to get an accommodation for a disability. How many parents in your district applied for a medical exemption for their children who had difficulty wearing a mask? How many were coerced into thinking they were lawfully compelled to provide a medical diagnosis to get that mask exemption? How many were denied such even after getting a doctor's note? Page three of the section 504 and students with disabilities PDF found on the website for the Washington Office of the Superintendent of Public Instruction clearly states that a school cannot require a parent to provide a medical diagnosis to evaluate a student. Yet Seattle School District required a medical diagnosis on their mask exemption forms. How many other schools played this trick on parents, insinuating that parents needed to jump through hoops to protect their children when lawfully they did not? When public officials imply authority they do not have or insinuate lawful requirements that do not exist, is this not operating under the color of law? We're not lawyers, but last we checked, operating under the color of law is called official misconduct, and it is a gross misdemeanor in this state. RCW. 9A.80.010, official misconduct. One, a public servant is guilty of official misconduct if with intent to obtain a benefit or to deprive another person of a lawful right or privilege, A, he or she intentionally commits an unauthorized act under color of law, or B, he or she intentionally refrains from performing a duty imposed upon him by law. Two, official misconduct is a gross misdemeanor. WAPA served you these public disclosure requests as a courtesy and a favor to inform you of possible legal liabilities that your own WSSDA groomed lawyers did not. The state agencies that compelled school districts to carry out masking and vaccination measures knew that the safest way to avoid legal liability for vaccine injuries and the harmful effects of long-term mask wearing was to pass that liability down to the lowest local level, the school district. Why? did WSSDA send a statewide alert and advise schools to seek legal counsel when they were informed that so many districts across the state were being served identical public disclosure requests asking for unidentifiable records. Through our PDRs, we were alerting our school board members to the legal liability that their own legal counsel may have been too nervous or ignorant to share with them. If you claim that you are just following orders from the state, Will that protect you down the line if it's proven that the governor's emergency order was based on fraudulent data? Finally, it is important to note how many of the requests we made in those documents were in a sense rhetorical questions. We asked for specific documents on safety data for the COVID-19 vaccines that we know do not exist. We did this to point out that these documents should exist. How can vaccines be mandated to teachers after Pfizer has been so reluctant to share safety data with the public? And there are no informational inserts in the vaccine packages. 
we asked for proof of FDA authorization because we know it does not exist. The vaccines are still only under emergency use authorization, which is another way for vaccine manufacturers to exempt themselves from liability for the injured. These are bold statements, but they are meant to help you see through the veil of media censorship that kept real data from you. Our movement is comprised of teachers who have already been injured by these vaccines, bus drivers who suffer from numb extremities, basketball coaches who have paralyzed arms, teachers with strokes and blood clots, and too many who have recently buried their parents who died of heart failure after taking the vaccines. Please get curious and dig deeper. Our most fervent goal is to work with you, not against you. After all, we are neighbors in the same community who ought to be looking out for each other. May God deliver us from this mess one good decision at a time. Respectfully, the parents of Washington. Thank you. Thank you, Clayton. Okay. I will go ahead and move on to agenda item 5.01, but before I do, um, before we get into the rest of the consent agendas and, and business, um, just I forgot to include this statement near the beginning, but here we go. Please understand that while it may appear the board is moving quickly on important matters, there have been previous discussions on these issues, either in earlier meetings or in board workshops, which are also open public meetings. Each director has had ample time to study the issues, ask appropriate questions, and obtain satisfactory answers from the acting superintendent, her staff, or through outside research. Okay, so 5.01, uh, consideration of grants. Is there a motion that the Monroe School District Board of Directors accept grants received in the amount of $80 from the Salem Woods PTA for makerspace supplies? I move that the Monroe School District Board of Directors accept the grants received in the amount of $80 from the Salem Woods PTA. Thank you guys. That's awesome. And that's going to help those students. Those students there. Is there a second? Second. There is a motion and a second that the Monroe School District Board of Directors accept grants received in the amount of $80 from the Salem Woods PTA for Makerspace Supplies. All our discussion. All in favor, raise your hand. Okay. The agenda item has fa passed five to zero. We'll go ahead and move on to superintendent consent agenda. And um, 6.08, approval of a superintendent consent agenda. Is there a motion that the Monroe School Board, hold on. It's refreshing, sorry. Is there a motion that the Monroe School Board of Directors approve all items as listed and presented in the superintendent consent agenda dated February 28th, 2022? Dr. Bumpus, can I ask a quick question? Yes. What was, um, was item 4.01 removed from the agenda? No, it was not. Thank you, Director Johnson. Sorry, mine was uh, refreshing and it pulled up. Okay, so we'll go back. Is that okay? Yeah, we'll go back up because we've already gotten consideration of grants and we mm -hmm. haven't approved the consent agenda. So we'll go back up to 4.01 capital projects update. Victor, I would never leave you out like that, Victor. And we have Victor Scarpelli, executive director of support services uh, to give us an update on the new capital facilities plan guidelines. Yeah, well, thank you. Um, I supplied the outline in the calendar for this school year. As you guys can see, uh, the dates have changed over past years due to COVID and due to some of the other items. Usually this time of year, I'd be presenting to you the Capital Facilities Plan for the Monroe School District. And right now it is still in process. So I wanted to give you all the heads up that uh, those of us in Snohomish County are working on our plans. Uh, we're working with uh, the Snohomish County on their projections for future enrollments as well as future housing and things like that that all take into consideration our plans. So if all goes well, by the June meeting, we should have the capital facilities plan yeah. 
totally um, out of the draft form into its regular form for all of you to uh, look at and approve, hopefully. So just wanted to keep you in the know of what was going on and no, it's not, it's not just hanging out there somewhere or not being done. And they can send someone to just check up on this stuff. Any questions or anything I can answer? Any questions? No. Okay. okay. Awesome. Thank you for that update, Victor. We appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. And back to agenda item 6.08 approval of a superintendent consent agenda. And is there a motion that the Monroe School District Board of Directors approve all items as listed and presented in the superintendent consent agenda dated February 28th, 2022? Is there a motion that the Monroe School Board of Directors approve all items as listed and presented in the superintendent consent agenda dated February 28th, 2022? Since we're all fighting over each other to say that, I will go ahead and move that the Monroe School District Board of Directors approve all items listed in and presented in the superintendent consent agenda dated February 28th, 2022. Is there a second? Second. Okay, there's a motion and a second to move that the Monroe School Board or to approve that the Monroe School Board of Directors approve all items as listed and presented in the superintendent consent agenda dated February 28, 2022. All in favor, raise your hand. Okay, the agenda item has passed five to zero. Moving on to agenda item 7.04, approval of board consent agenda. Is there a motion that the Monroe School Board of Directors approve all items as listed and presented in the board consent agenda dated February 28, 2022? Is there a motion that the Monroe School Board of <laughs> School District Board of Directors approve all items as listed and presented in the board consent agenda and dated February 28, 2022? Feel free to jump in, guys. It's okay. I will move that the Monroe School District Board of Directors approve all items listed and presented in the board consent agenda dated February 28th, 2022. I don't have to be the only one to make motions. <laughs> is there a second? Second. Okay, there is a motion and a second that the Monroe School District Board of Directors approve all items as listed and presented in the board consent agenda dated February 28th, 2022. All in favor, raise your hand. Okay, the agenda item has passed five to zero. Moving on to agenda item 8.01, and I'm hoping we hear some more voices here. We've got board reports, comments, and suggestions. We'll go ahead and include some updates. We've got kindergarten enrollment starts Tuesday, March 1st. Yay! We've got a superintendent chat Monday, March 7th at 5 p.m. Kindergarten information night Tuesday, March 8th from 4.30 p.m. to 6 p.m. MHS ninth grader information night Wednesday March 9th at 6 30 p.m and MHS graduation Saturday June 11th at 2 30 p.m go Bearcats anyone want to go first why am I not surprised Your, uh, director Campbell do you have something to okay well you know what director Johnson volunteered we'll go ahead and thank you go. thank you you bet <laughs> I had um, one more thing to our updates about um, information night. So Montessori information night uh, is on the 15th. Um, my quick report ties into some of what Nathan brought up when he was here. So as the WIA rep, um, I've been watching some of our sports and activities and was really excited to hear about our Monroe High School gymnastics team going to state last Friday. Um, they, this is the first time that Monroe High School has been represented at the gymnastics conference. The team did really well all around and achieved their highest marks in the floor event. Uh, it was really exciting for me to to track and I learned, um, I, I researched and learned all of the various icons that are used to show. So when you're looking at the results of the conference, they just have an icon up at the top and then all of the scores for the teams are listed below. And so it was kind of exciting for me to learn, um, learn what all of those icons meant and to see that, that the team did really well in floor, <laughs> in all of them, but did really well in floor. So that's it for me. Oh, 
sorry, one more thing to add. I got to do a tour of um, Hidden River Middle School. Um, it was incredible. It, it was so cool to be on campus, to see students, um, to see educators and staff working with those students and working together. And I think one of my biggest takeaways was noticing how immediately as, as people engaged with each other, and I mean, when student engaged with teacher or staff or when teachers engaged together or when they engaged with the principal as we were touring, there, there was an immediate need to prioritize what folks needed in that space and in that, that moment. Um, and I was, it just made me feel so excited for what our students get to experience and the spaces that our staff and educators are creating for those students. I went into one room that was a, um, all of like the, the main lights were low and there were all of these cool, um, not Christmas lights, but like fun lights, like twinkly lights. And it was just such a calming environment. Um, and students were talking, you know, just regularly having conversations with their, their educators and their the staff supporting them. And, and it was wonderful to see. So I thank in River Middle School for allowing me the opportunity to come. Um, and I, I'm excited to see some more schools in the future. Thanks. Thank you, Director Johnson. Director Barnes? I was going to let uh, Jeremiah go first because I know that he had prepared a little bit more and I was going to sort of piggyback off of that since it was initially his, uh, his idea to go see the three schools that we saw on Wednesday. Jeremiah, did you want to go first and I'll go afterwards or do you want me to go first? Yeah, um, I just wanted to say thanks for tagging along with me. And I know Director Whitfield or uh, Acting Superintendent uh, Whitfield is not here tonight, but just thanking her to, especially on the record, to just, man, she set up a great tour and principals, uh, you know, we, we started at uh, Monroe Heights. Actually, Director Barnes and I started district office because I messed up and I thought we were going to start there. Then we made it to Monroe High School and um, met with uh, Principal Brett Willie and Jennifer Murphy, his AP, and uh, uh, Sharon Tarek, the CTE director as well, got to meet an amazing front staff. I just felt welcome as soon as I walked into MHS. And um, what got to go around and see awesome stuff that students were doing. Um, one of the things that was the most impactful, and I don't know if Brett is even on here and he can hear me, but um, Brett, who maybe was trying not to spill his coffee out of his Idaho mug as we walked around, he's like, I want to see you guys during passing period. I want you guys to see what it's like, which high school is nuts, right? And he's there, and this is all he does. He stands there with his coffee, cup of coffee in one hand and his fist out in the other, and the kids just know, and he doesn't get animated. He, the kids just know Principal Willie, and they're just like fist bumping him the whole time. So like, so what's up, Willie? What's up, Principal Willie? And for me to see the relationship that this principal has at a large high school with the students and that connection with everything that we've been through this year and the last year, especially at the high school, to me, at, and I was a high school teacher and I was, I'm a middle school teacher now, I understand the effort that it takes to do that. The way that the staff feel about him that, we've, that we heard as well, um, to me was, it speaks volumes to the championing, championing work that's going on there. And so I was sitting there going, man, I was on cloud nine leaving and they have like the best view of the mountains and it was gorgeous that day. And what all the teachers were doing, they were just on point. The students were focused, their students were on task and to see what they're doing, the student work in the classrooms. And then we go over and see Melanie Gray, which I think you're on here, Melanie, and um, showing off Salem Woods Elementary. Whoa. <laughs> all right. The fact that your teachers were all on the same spot in every pod of every grade level, like we walk into one room and we pick up where we left off in the lesson in the other room, you got some serious PLC work going on there. And so much for the both of you guys to like just celebrate. And something that I asked both Brett and Jennifer Murphy and I asked Melanie as well, um, what are things as we as a board can do to support you guys? And they both, you know, I don't think that they, they, worked on this, but guys, listen to me, you know, directors, not to be informal, uh, celebrating the wins that are happening because you walk on campus. And for me, it's hard because I teach. So I'm working at the same time they are. I was on midwinter break. So I'm like, get me in classrooms. 
and there is so much to celebrate you guys that's going on in the district that yes, we hear lots of things we need to work on and lots of catastrophes that are happening, but we can't just catastrophize and run around screaming with our hair on fire that the sky is falling all of the time. There's so much, and I would love to see in our agenda as well, moments that we can find because there's so much to celebrate. We can fill it every single time and have at least something or multiple items to celebrate what we're doing so well in the district. Highlighting teachers, highlighting administrators, highlighting student work that's happening. Um, I was so impressed. And then we went over to Maltby and, and we hung out with um, Christine Hillstad. And there's a lot of challenges happening at Maltby, but it was awesome. Sarah, we snuck into your kids' rooms. We got to see the Montessori program. So totally jealous. And, um, and even with the sub, you know, they had their, um, their digital learning uh, teacher uh, subbing. And so she's like, fine, we're just going to jump into a digital learning uh, unit. And so even in the, the shortage of subs to watch the flexibility of the staff, was awesome. I got called away early. I was going to see more, but there's something with my son. I had to go uh, run over to the middle school and pick him up. But, but I was just so impressed to see at many different levels what's happening, but to see them championing student work, the administrators, the teachers were real. It didn't feel like a facade of like, oh, we have to put on our best, whatever. Yeah, you want to be doing a good job, but when people come by, but they were just real with us and raw. And I appreciated that so much. So for me, like it was a big deal. And then one last thing I wanted to share, and then I'll turn it over to, to, to Molly. Um, coming up next week also on the 8th with the kindergarten night, I am going to be at Frank Wagner. Entonces, padres que hablan español, voy a estar ahí para ustedes para que podamos charlar con los directores. That wasn't for you English speakers, so there you go. Um, but uh, all, of our, all of our directors, we have five directors and five elementaries, so we're going to be out, and I'll be at Frank, and each of us are going to be there. So parents of kindergartners getting registered for next year, come connect with us. We want to hear from you guys because you're coming in. And uh, so I'm really excited. So that's all I had to share, but just lots to celebrate. And I'm, I'm really excited for me. It was a huge brush, breath of fresh air to say, yes, there's a lot of heavy things we're dealing with, but good Lord, our staff is doing such amazing work. And, and that for me, just, I, I needed that. I maybe emotionally, but it was so great to see all the work they're doing. So, you know, to, to MHS, to Salem Woods and to Malt because I was just there. Man, you guys are awesome. And thank you for being such gracious hosts. We appreciate it. Yeah, so I second everything that uh, Director Campbell said. The one other thing that I loved at the high school was how we saw some teachers thinking outside of the box. Kind of like how you saw Sarah at uh, Hidden River. We saw a particular teacher. We missed seeing the class in there. We kind of came afterwards. We got hung up in some other spots, but the, the fun lights, the living plants on the desks, the fidget poppets, um, she just had this most incredible inviting space for kids that was calming. It just made you want to hang out. And another trick that she told us that she would use is she'd go for walks with the kids. She found that they would actually sit and do better after they went for a walk. Um, and so I just, I appreciated how she thought outside of the box and kind of went above and beyond to make that classroom and that space a really awesome space for our students. Um, so appreciate all of the staff at the high school. We saw so many incredible things, um, even the students, just amazing. And then over at Salem Woods, oh my gosh, just the excitement that Melanie had to show us every single classroom, everything that was going on. And the teachers were actually excited to have us in the classrooms and wanting to share with us what was going on and to interact with little kids. I mean, I'm with my three boys all the time at home, but to interact with other people's kids, um, it was just amazing. And to see the things that they're doing and to see their artwork on the walls and our teachers really are doing such a phenomenal job and our staff, uh, just to help make everything run and keep everything going. And we got to kind of see what Playworks looks like out on the playground. And I know that they're gonna be introducing that at um, Maltby Elementary here soon. They have that in the works. Uh, and so then to piggyback off of that and go to Maltby, uh, one of the classrooms that I went into, it was a particular teacher who wanted us to stop by and she was so excited to show off the work that she'd been doing on the Underground Railroad because they're reading a book about Harriet Tubman and I loved it. She had this huge poster on the wall and the kids were going through it and they were learning the geography at the same time they were learning this important story through history and um, she even had the poster Wonder on the wall and that's a movie that the kids, my kids really like because as they say, everybody needs a friend. Uh, and it's just a phenomenal movie. And she was telling me this story about how she, back pre-COVID, uh, did a field trip 
with the kids in her class to go see the movie opening night because they had read it together as a class and what a fun, awesome experience that was. And it was like, wow, this is so cool. I love the fact that we have teachers that do things like this and make learning fun for kids. So I truly just appreciate Christine, the principal over at Maltby and Brett and Jen and just everybody. You guys are doing a phenomenal job. Um, I loved seeing everything there and Jeremiah, Director Campbell, I've already sent an email off to Jen about getting that on the agenda. We just have to kind of figure out who's going to run it, what that's going to look like. But uh, that's something that even Christine said as well when I asked her at the end, you know, what can we do to support you? What do you want to see the board do? What does this look like? And the main thing was, I mean, resounding we heard was we want you here. We want you in schools. We want to be able to show you what it is that we're doing and celebrate the good. There is so much good. Can you help us celebrate the good and get it out to the community? Because right now with the news and everything else, all the community seems to see is the bad and we want them to see the good. So directors, we have to be light shiners for our public schools. We have to shine light of all the good that is taking place and things that are going on. Um, our, our, Teachers need it. Our paraeducators need it. Um, just thank someone that works for the district if you run across them. It's not always an easy job, but thank them. Even if it's not, you know, school board director month or it's not, you know, teacher, teacher appreciation week or, you know, whatever it might be. Just any time. A thank you can go a long way. And when people know they're appreciated, it makes a huge difference. So I think that's it. <laughs> Thank you, Director Barnes and Director Campbell. Director Whitfield. I have to give a shout out to the tech department. I turned on closed caption and I was listening and reading what Director Barnes was on here. I'm reading what I'm saying. Anyway, that's pretty cool that we have uh, closed caption on the system and I'm watching what I'm reading. So shout out to the tech department. Uh, do a good job with all the technologies, all the organization of all the systems and complexities. That's all, thanks. I got one more thing I just remembered, sorry. I actually ran into Nathan at the gas station the other day. He was the car in front of me as I pulled in. I was like, oh my gosh, Nathan. Um, so I had gotten done reading the, the uh, um, oh my gosh, the they're not, the additions of the uh, Monroe high tie that Ginny had printed out and give it to us. And in there, they asked for suggestions of, do you have anything that you'd like to see in here? And I told him, I said, Nathan, yes, is there a way? I think it would be really cool. What do you think about interviewing board directors, you know, kind of asking them for some fun questions, help the students get to know us a little bit better. And he actually thought that was a really good idea. So he's going to reach out to um, the staff that well, staff, I guess, the kids who volunteer their time to make that paper a possibility and see what they think about that. But I just kind of wanted to throw that out there. I thought that would be kind of another fun way for us to connect with the students and uh, involve ourselves in what's going on. And then I will be at Salem Woods for kindergarten uh, night coming up here. So if you're there, say hi. Thank you, Director Barnes and Director Whitfield. Um, I only have a few pieces to include. And so the Parent Hub is now open. It opened last month. Well, this month, actually. We're still in February. It opened this month, but this Wednesday morning from 9 to 10.30 a.m., they you can join with friends for laughs, refreshments, and a guest speaker. Okay? We can all be lucky. And uh, let's see, at the March 4th, meeting they are creating a natural wind chime with Monroe School District community partner Oxbow Farms so that's really neat there's something different every week and it's every Wednesday from 9 to 10 30 a.m and I actually was able to read about it through our peach jar is that what it right the peach jar announcements that we all receive so that's really neat being able to open that up and it's in Spanish and English and it's at Frank at the Wagner Center and so um, parents and family members are welcome to come to that. I attended a PLC meeting today, went from, started at 8.30 and ended at 3.30. And I just wanna shout out, one, I, I was there, so I got to join the party. It's like learning a, a, like a foreign language for me. I'm gonna be super honest, it's education and it's very different. 
And I just consider myself so fortunate and so honored to even be in that room. I was with, I believe, over 21 district leaders and teachers in there. And watching them learn just processes or pick up on it or have conversations and it's about making it more equitable for our students and so i just thought how neat is that and how what an amazing opportunity to do that um and it's just ongoing work right and how to enhance it uh, the experience for our kids in this district um and i want to also shout out um miss hayne over at frylands she has this um this time at school where it's like a quiet time or meditation time and I had my third grader who took a 40 minute nap in her class. Sorry, there's my dog. 40 minute uh, nap in her class. And I just think how amazing is it that we have those experiences for our kids, that we have teachers who care for our kids that much, right? So this is my, my little guy who is on a 504 plan. And I just thought, what an amazing teacher, what an amazing experience it is for him um, to be able to rest when he needs to rest and then come back and do the work. So shout out, Ms. Hain. Thank you for always taking care of my little babies. And um, thank you all directors and staff and people. You are so appreciated. Brenda, especially you right now. I know that you are doing so much additional work and I appreciate everything that you're doing. Um, and you're just, you're a really big deal. Okay. So thank you. We're very thankful to have you in our school district. Okay, and with that all said, does anyone else have any questions or comments, anything to add? Okay. I don't like going after you, Jen, because I like it that you close, but I just wanted to mention that okay. I, I may have missed it. Also graduation coming up because it's, it's in the notes. June mm -hmm. 11th, it's official seniors. Get ready, it's coming. Uh, Saturday, June 11th at 2.30. It's in Everett at, it's escaping me, guys, help me out. Where are we gonna be? The... Angel of the Wind, Serena, isn't that the name of it? Yes, that, that's right. So, and then also, I and somebody said this, the Greater Information Night one more time is Wednesday, March 9th at 6.30 p.m. For those of you guys who have kids going into high school next year to get ready for that, um, make sure. Sorry, Jen, I didn't want to go after you, but just I wanted to make sure those were reiterated just in case. It's okay, my Labradoodle would not stop barking, so it actually worked out perfectly. Uh, let's go ahead, moving on to agenda item 9.01, executive session number one. The exec executive session will be to discuss with legal counsel representing the district litigation or potential litigation to which the district or a member acting in an official capacity is or is likely to become a party. It is 7.08 p.m. We will be in executive session until 7.40 p.m. It is 7.40 p.m. Uh, the board is still in executive session. We'll go ahead and add another 10 minutes and return at 7.50 p.m. It is 7.50 p.m. The board of directors have ended their first executive session or headed into executive session number two for the review or performance of an employee. It is 7.50 p.m. and we will leave back at 8.30 p.m. It is 8.30 p.m. The school board uh, directors are still in executive session. We will be adding 10 more minutes and we'll return at 8.40 p.m. Sorry about that. Now you're ready. There we go. It is 8.40 p.m. The board is out of executive session and tonight's meeting is adjourned. Thank you, Keith. Have a great night.